Hi, it's me, John of JJ Merch Memory, and welcome back to my channel. If you're new around here, hi, welcome. Thanks for watching this video. Uh, this is all about hats, millinery, tutorials, you name it, we we'll talk about it all. So drop me a, a subscribe down below, and while you're there, turn on notifications to be notified when we put out videos in future. So, you've probably not, well, you can tell by the thumbnail. Um, Organised this month with my burst on millinery. So um, I was late last month, so you got two in a row. And um, so happy birthday to all my October subscribers. And in this week's video, we are going to be making this beautiful um, headpiece. So the burst on for October is. Um, Turmaline and opal so basically using this sequin film which i got from petersham's because turmaline you can get in pink um i thought i'd go with obviously with the pink and the oak because because it, it's um it's an iridescent finish on this sequin film so it kind of looked opalish so that's why i went with that um so this entire huge flower uh, dominates this hat and we have uh, some bio palms here. Um, we have some sparkle bits, uh, which were attached using UV resin because this is a little bit of a nightmare when it comes to trying to sew together. So um, yeah, you'll see that in the video. So um, also question of the day, apologies. I missed it last week and sorry, I do apologize but it will be at the end of the video. So I'll answer, I'll look, read out the answers from last week, well, the one before, and set this week's question of the day then. So if you wanna see how I made this, let's get started. So before we start, I just wanna say a big thank you to my Patreon, Reggie. Thank you very much for your continued support. It does mean the world. So do you want to get a shout out when you join? Just check out my Patreon link in the description box below. Today we are starting with the trim as this will be an experiment to see if this actually works. And I'm using this cute opaque oil slick sequin film in light pink from Petersham's Millinery. I'm using this as October has two birthstones. So you've got tourmaline and opal. This film has a little opal shimmer and tourmaline comes in many colors, including pink. In fact, pink tourmaline usually commands a higher price. So this film is from Petersham's Millery, as mentioned, and is 12 pounds per roll, which comes in a 10 meter roll or can be bought for one pound 50 per meter. So I cut enough from the roll for two petals, folded it in half and clamped together to stop any moving of the film. I then cut out a petal shape using a freeform cut. However, I did alter the shape of the petal after filming. Here you can see me playing around with how it will look by putting a small crease in the film to give that petal look. I cut several of these and using a needle or something sharp and pointy, poke holes into the bottom of the petals as we'll be using these to join the petals together. You can see here I am laying one on top of the other to get the same hole placement on each petal. Next, using very thin wire, I think mine was 0.2 millimeters, I started sewing the petals together. You could use a bulldog clip to hold the petals together like I did, as this will help with lining up the sewing holes. Once all the petals were attached to each other, I popped in this pink biot flower that I received in a grab bag from Peachums, and it's not as full as they usually are, but that's not an issue as I'm going to add more to the flower. What I actually wanted to do was just see how it sat in the center of the bigger flower so I can see what I can do to bulk this biot out. So I took some of the pink film and I also have it in a lilac translucent iridescent and I cut out very thin strips around three millimeter wide and around 10 centimeters long. I then made a small ring of UV resin on the silicone mat and I cured it using a UV light. Once cured, I dipped the end of the strips in some uncured UV resin and I laid this onto the ring, occasionally curing between layers. I kept doing this until I built up enough spikes. Note though, when working with UV resin, you will either need a UV light or direct sunlight to cure. 
And also, be sure to put lids on bottles you're working with and move any brushes or anything you've used to put the resin on something to move it out of the way before you use the light to ensure it doesn't cure. What I would also suggest doing is using gloves if possible, I know I'm not, and also a mask as well. When I had enough strips, I fed the wire of the palm through the hole in the ring and added a little more UV resin so the ring would stick to the palm and cured this using the UV light. There was still an obvious gap between the strips and the palm, so I wound a little bit of peach mesh to help fill that gap. Plus, this also gave the added benefit of pushing up some of the feathers in the palm to look more full and to finish off the flower. I then added some pink Chinese crystals to some of the biots using UV resin again to hold into place. So to put it all together, I pushed the wire of the palm through the center of this baby pink braided mat and I secured the flower by bending the wire into a loop and sewing the wire to the mat for security. I then positioned the mat roughly where it should sit on a head and which I mean this head already had a base that I'd already made in the position I wanted. This showed me where the flower sat on the base so I can sew it onto the base. The base was made out of buckram, which was covered in some interfacing, and finally several layers of the peach mesh was used that was used in the flower, and this was finished off with a bright pink grogrin ribbon. When the flower was secured to the base, I put it back on the head and played with the mat to see what folds worked and sewed these to give a little dimension. So at this point I thought I was done, so I put it back on the head and then I realised the flower needed a little more as you could see some of the wire used to sew the petals together. So what I did was cut some more of the peach mesh and I placed this around the, f like between the, fl the big flower and the little st like sticky out bits. What this will do will help bulk out the flower a little more and it covered any of the sewing of the wire that I used earlier. To finish the hat, I used more of the mesh to make a lining for the piece and I added some hat elastic. I did try it on and it was a little heavy, so I added a comb for security. What I might do before I put this on my website for sale, I might even add a headband and remove the elastic as it's quite heavy on the side of the head. Like mentioned earlier, off camera, I did also alter the petals from an asymmetric petal to more of a symmetrical petal. So lots of new techniques. Um, working with this in a this film in a different way, slight introduction to UV resin, uh, which I would l love to start working with a little bit more um, when it comes to making hats. And um, yeah, so let me know what you think. So question of the week. So a couple of videos ago, the question of the week was if you could make a hat for anybody dead or alive, who would that be? So the first up we have Lorato who said that they would make a hat for their late grandmother whose birthday was also in September, um, same as same as they, they are, and uh, best wishes from South Africa. So hi to everybody in South Africa. We have um, Janice, so hi Janice, nice to see you again, who said she would love to make headwear for Audrey Hepburn as she always looks stunning in every hat she wore, which I kind of agree with. We have Julie, hi Julie, um, who said she would make a hat for her gorgeous friend Joanne, who lives in New Zealand and she's not seen her for eight years. And she always looks amazing in hats. So um, thank you Julie for yours. And I think that's it. So yeah, that is all, that's this week's answers. So this week's question, <clears throat> so to answer the question, just drop me a comment in the description box below. This week's question is, do you prefer to design using a sketchbook and draw your designs out? Or do you prefer to see where the materials take you? Personally myself, I 
it's a mixture of both. So sometimes if I've got a specific idea in mind, I will sketch it out so then I can visualize it. Sometimes, though, especially when I'm filming these videos, I just get the materials together and I see what happens and it kind of forms it as I go along. So that is this week's question of the week. Let me know in the comments down below what you think. As always, um, links to everything will be in the description box below. So there's links to all the materials where I can find uh, links to them and to also my Patreon as well. Thank you very much for watching. If you've got this far, comment down below saying, how did you go on at the gym? Because I'm going to the gym for the first time in February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, nine months. Because this boy's got fat and I need to lose this COVID belly. So, um, yes, comment that in the description box below. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.